Cyclone Mocha continuing to intensify and bulking up on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for May the 12th. Well, after two fail attempts of a tropical weather bulletin, we are finally back here uh, after technical issues plagued us for a while. Cyclone Mocha, a powerful storm already at Category 1 status, the 17th storm of the year so far. We are code orange for it, a serious situation probably going to develop in Myanmar and possibly Bangladesh. It is now a mere 20 days until the Atlantic hurricane season begins. A large trough feature across the Atlantic there and uh, some thunderstorms going on across the United States uh, Great Plains region. Lots of tornado warnings going on right now as well. Uh, elsewhere though we've got this 40% chance still active there in the South Indian Ocean and uh, possibly going to get there and of course Mocha quite clearly clear to see that one uh, really tightening up on the latest satellite imagery there it is in the Indian Ocean Bay of Bengal region to the west northwest now of the Andaman Islands and will be uh, steering towards the northeast towards the coast of Myanmar and we expect landfall will be in between two and three days also though a little surprise a 10 percent that we've issued here in the south pacific near french polynesia gfs and marginal support from the ecmwf for possibly a subtropical or even tropical system moving on down there uh, in around two or three days checking satellite imagery around the world in the last 24 hours it looks like this you can clearly see the big bulk of cyclone mocha which has caused uh, some significant rainfall even along the western coast of india and you can see it there over the central bay of bengal lots of red zones showing very high rain rates and here's some more satellite imagery showing the cloud structure of this developing cyclone we were looking at it on the live event earlier on uh, last night local time and don't forget that we do have one tonight as well just after this bulletin uh, early morning local time but on this imagery you can see that big shield of cloud moving off towards the coast of India there along the coastline actually and the main bulk of the storm in the center with that developing eye feature it's been quite concealed in the last uh, few hours but it looks like that eye might be starting to come out again obviously it's been there the whole time underneath and microwave imagery would tell you that uh, but on this satellite view you can see that it's uh, become less apparent underneath that big mass of convection which has been blowing up well into the minus 80s in terms of temperatures um, and you can see here certainly getting more potent over time with those uh, larger cloud tops wrapping themselves completely around eliminating any threat of dry air intrusion the only thing that could prevent this storm is wind shear but we haven't seen much to do with that so far and there's just some ra radar shots, not much to look at yet, it's still too far away from land. Sea surface temperatures around the world look like this, already getting quite warm in the eastern Pacific and the coast of Mexico there, very warm indeed, getting up to close to 32 degrees Celsius. The Atlantic looking good around the Caribbean region, Cuba particularly, the Gulf Stream there, that loop eddy, and also the uh, Gulf Stream looking good as well with a large tract of 26 degrees Celsius. Sea surface temperatures over Mocha right now, extremely warm, 32 degrees Celsius possibly, and they'll still be around 30 degrees all the way up until landfall. The Southwest Indian Ocean looking like this, those temperatures are cooling still, only just holding on to 27 degrees Celsius on the Mass Serene Islands and the northern coast of Madagascar, still one or two spots of 30, as is the case as well off the top end of Australia, but in general these temperatures are all starting to decline as we enter the winter period down there in the Southern Hemisphere. I believe there's been some cold temperatures in South and Eastern Australia. And the South Pacific, that system that might develop sea surface temperatures over that right now are probably around 25, 26 degrees Celsius, it is borderline. And in the Western Pacific, very warm SSTs, looks like we could have quite a bit more activity that could take advantage of all of that warm sea surface temperature region there. 
Anomalies, it is slightly above average in that Western Pacific zone and it's moderately above average in the North Indian Ocean where Cyclone Mocha is. Eastern Pacific also above average right now which could favour that early season development window which is about to open any time now and the Atlantic is generally above average too apart from one or two spots that are below in the subtropical zones. South Pacific also well above average in general but that area of interest area uh, looks to the, as though it's going to be around average in that zone so it's not really taking advantage of unusual sea surface temperatures. Oceanic heat content still looking decent for the low latitudes of the South Pacific. On the northern side you can see here the Western Pacific really building in now in the Philippine Sea between Guam and the Philippines. Uh, much better than what we've been looking at even last week. Uh, really getting those deep colours. Eastern Pacific has been pretty unchanged uh, but still looking good. Here's Cyclone Mocha and the latest GFS scenario takes it into land very close to Sitwe I believe or actually it's to the north of there it's between Sitwe and uh, Cox's Bazaar right on the border between Myanmar and Bangladesh and the GFS is calling for a landfall at around category 4 status here. Other models like the ECMWF is, is quite similar. The Icon model has a much uh, quicker landfall and much sooner um, to the south near um, some of those other locations i've forgotten the names already south of sitway that location down there could get a landfall too but it's not as likely here's this other system down in the southern indian ocean and it eventually forms there on that gfs forecast most models are still holding on to that possibility that's why we're giving it a 40 percent it is near the end of the seven day period here or five day period as we look at it on this model uh, but as you can see on the gfs it's still quite keen to get it towards hurricane equivalent status and here's this other system near French Polynesia that spins up very quickly. You can see it there spinning up quickly and dying off quickly as well, turning post-tropical within about a day and a half. So we're only giving it a 10%. ECMWF may have a subtropical depression on that. Other models haven't really picked it up. It does happen relatively soon on day two or three of that forecast period. And then it continues southeastwards well away from any other land areas. Rainfall estimates from this storm, and just in case it got a bit confusing when I was pointing out the individual models, we are still favouring a landfall quite close to the border between Myanmar and Bangladesh, and if that does occur near the landfall area, we will expect a storm surge in excess of 2 metres quite clearly, probably a lot more than that if the storm really ramps up. And take a look at some of these rainfall amounts getting up towards 14 and 15 inches, which is approximately uh, four, nearly 400 millimeters of rainfall. Even in areas in the southern part of Myanmar near Yangon, nine inches of further rainfall in that location there, the capital, one of the capitals. Um, and you can see there just over 200 millimeters. That is same too for parts of eastern Bangladesh and even to parts of the e eastern regions of India. So a large swathe of rainfall heading in there. In the longer range, day 5 through 10, you can see this donut really forming there. GFS not giving up on this system that's not giving up the ghost itself. Moving towards the southeast there, probably a category 2 or 3 peak there. That really would be a sight to see so late into the season locally. This is May. Um, it's the equivalent to November in the northern hemisphere. And there it is again, and possibly a little system passing by La Reunion as well. Uh, but there's that main system, that 40% chance, moving on down south. GFS also up to its old tricks in the Western Pacific as well, where it develops another significant typhoon out of pretty much nothing. Very low latitude, and eventually it does perk up, up around there, around the 21st, 22nd of May. That is a long way out. I wouldn't put any stock into that just yet. But we are getting more into the season now, so we can't fully rule out these features as the On This Day section will show you in a moment. But first, that's the serious stuff done with. You can take a look at the Force 13 merch store by scanning the barcode and taking a look at all our products. There's some new stuff on the way, actually. Um, but for the time being, we've still got all of the usuals, including the pillows there and the still waiting for Hone t-shirts, which are never going to go out of fashion, are they? 
Well, we'll see. Into the Silly Range then, and you can see here what happens to this Western Pacific system. GFS takes it relatively close to Guam there. They get Tropical Storm Force winds. Then it slides towards the west and then turns quite abruptly northwestwards in the very late part of the run and really gets strong. Category 4 status by the looks of it there with an enormous wind field, it has to be said, right towards the end days of May. Uh, so that's a long way out, but certainly can't be completely ruled out but I certainly wouldn't be worrying about that right now a system that's still going to be out at sea by the time we get to the end of day 16 and in the southern hemisphere that system still goes on there that one that we're tracking that 40% chance there it is turning post tropical finally on the 25th of May at quite a high latitude it really would be <coughs> one that goes against the grain for this time of year down there in the South Indian Ocean so probably a category two or three peak and then it sweeps on out towards the southwestern coast of Australia as a remnant low. Quite a strong one though. Well you can discuss all of this live on our discord server discord.gg slash force 13. We have people all around the world talking about the wide world of weather wherever they are so I'm sure there's something there for everyone as well as general chat in there as well. Well, on this day, as I was alluding to, we had a Category 5 active in the Western Pacific. It was Typhoon Walt in 1991, May the 12th. And on yesterday's Tropical Weather Bulletin, we had Ramerson in 2008, which I want to give a mention to. That was a Category 4 in a very similar location, just to the northeast. So it certainly can happen at this time of year. And in the South Pacific, we had Tropical Storm Lisa, which was just about to die off off the northern coast, northern tip there of New Caledonia. That was on this day 32 years ago. Back to today and it's been a while since we got a new name storm to talk about. In the Atlantic though the first name on the list is Arlene despite the National Hurricane Center's announcement earlier on. The Eastern Pacific Adrian in the Central Pacific Hone. If you want to find out more about that NHC update go to their website though they classified that subtropical storm from january if you've no idea what we're talking about i really recommend you go there and look moa next up in the western pacific and in the north indian ocean the next name is now bipajoy and in the australian region next up is jasper the southwest indian ocean fabienne and the south pacific it's lola we will be live shortly in an hour's time after this update goes out stay tuned for more updates